This episode is brought to you by Ring's End. Your inspiration, our expertise. Those are the words to live by for Ring's End. If you can dream it, they can help you achieve it. Whether you're a first-time homeowner or a lifelong contractor, Ring's End is always there to help you bring your project to life. With premium lumber and building products, services, and resources, their employees are dedicated to making sure you have everything you need to get the job done right. And with over a century in the industry, you can trust Ring's End to guide you in your home improvement endeavors. Ring's End is a one-stop shop, so all you need is to bring in your ideas, and they'll take care of the rest. So visit one of their 19 locations across Connecticut and New York, or shop online at ringsend.com. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs, your home improvement and remodeling podcast, where the two most entertaining guys discuss the do's and don'ts in home construction and in the remodeling industry. Remember that you can nail it, paint it, or just tune into the show. How about that? Uh, Here are your hosts, Colin Shaw and Jimmy Driscoll. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs. Hello, Jim. Hello there, Colin. How are we doing today? We're good. I have a little little trivia for you. Actually, I don't know if it's trivia, but... Oh, boy. All right. Do you know how to catch a wild turkey <laughs> without killing it? Um, go to stop and shop. <laughs> no, actually, no, dude, it's already dead. Oh. So this is my friend John Ein, uh, my friend John Ein Hellick from Norwich, Connecticut, told me this years ago, and I have yet to see somebody do it. But it, a, a po- it supposedly it really works. So if you have wild turkeys in your backyard uh-huh. and they come there frequently, yeah, yeah, you take kernel corn right uh-huh. you spread it in your lawn and in the middle of the of that circle of corn you have a little styrofoam cup and you fill about a quarter of it with with the kernel corn right mm-hmm. so when the turkeys finally eat all the the corn and they come to the styrofoam cup one will put its head in there and start eating the corn and what happens is he may peck so hard he'll go through the bottom of the styrofoam cup and he can't get his head out so when they can't see they lay down, and you go right over. You can pick the turkey up. <laughs> you know, for the like past twenty seconds or so, Marissa has been cringing, waiting to see where this is going to go. Yeah, she's but like, it's the truth. "Great, now I got to edit the intro." <laughs> no, he's cool. done it. All right, all right. John's I done like it because I, I will like now it. call him and go, "Johnny, you lying to me?" And he goes, <laughs> "No, man, I've done it, man. It works." <laughs> But I'd be afraid of their talents because they're really sharp. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah. They'll do some damage. Hey, also, one other thing, too, before we begin the show. Uh, thank you to Mel. Mel, uh, we she got her mug, and she, she was did. very excited. Awesome. And she took pictures, and uh, one with her dog as well. So they're very cool. Uh, she said a lot of nice complimentary things to us, too. So we really appreciate nice. that, Mel. Thanks, Love Mel. having you as a listener. Enjoy your cup, And Mel. Lisa in Tampa, still no picture of you with your mug. What's going on, I Lisa? That's not very nice. Come on. You know, we, sent, we sent two mugs. Wow. Yeah, I know. But okay. All right. So, hey, listen, we got a great show for you today. Yep. We have Ward Schrader. There he is. He is the co host of Bargain Mansions mm-hmm. uh, on HGTV. And uh, we were just talking with him before we went on and uh, saying three seasons, but he's in uh, season 3B. Yeah. So we get to learn what 3B means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, someday we'll be there. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll know exactly what that means. Yeah. But for the meantime, we got to live through Ward. Ward, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing great. Thanks a lot. I uh, really appreciate you being on the show, too. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. the invitation. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we it's well known that you know you wanted to come on the show to say that you know Behind the Studs is your favorite podcast. Yeah. And you listen every week, and right? Right? I, I thought that went without saying. <laughs> well, we like well, to gloat. We like yeah. to gloat off camera. We, we like when people say it, even if it's us. It's my favorite podcast. I listen to it every time I get in the car. There That's you go. It. All, All right. Go. Thank you. All right. Record that and reprint that. That's okay. It. <laughs> Just put That's it on a loop. It. Now we'll work on the pulp. Right. <laughs> oh, boy. That's going to be a tougher one. <laughs> uh, all right. So tell us a little about uh, what, what it is uh, you do. Yeah. Tell us over in Kansas City. Tell the audience the, about the show. Is what we're, we're basically well, uh, It's my daughter and I. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Started it about seven years ago, Tamara. So my life has been construction of all kinds of things, commercial and uh, and housing. And um, so I taught the kids when I was getting started how to how to work. But when I didn't have enough money to pay a crew, <laughs> and 
and I didn't really think that they were learning anything. I, I, you know, I mean, it was a lot of complaining is what it was. <laughs> I, 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 I had two oh, kids. Yeah. I know exactly that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so I, they grow up and they leave home. And the first thing they all do is buy a rundown house and really? all four of them. And, wow. uh, and so dad gets called, Hey dad, can you come this weekend and help? So uh -huh. yeah. I did, and I'd work on them for a year or so and get them livable. And, and, and they not that I worked by myself. They, they worked hard, too. It was, yeah. it was kind of a two-man crew or three or whatever. And, uh, and so Tamara, during, in 07, uh, bought a 6,000-square-foot house that had been repossessed. And wow. uh, wow. it was trashed. The, the previous owner tore the cabinets off, broke the doors, pulled the sheetrock down, just oh my gosh. Left, it, uh, left in a... Um, a pretty unhappy way. And, and she went in there and started working on it and I'd come and help a little bit here and there. And, uh, but mostly she was coordinating all the effort and a producer out of California saw, heard about her and, and, uh, came over and saw what she was doing and, uh, said, we need to make a sizzle reel. And so we made us, they made a sizzle reel. Uh, I happened to stop by. I was on a business trip, drove over, knew she was doing it, wanted to see that somebody wasn't taking advantage of my daughter. And, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And because uh, I expected it to be, they're going to do this sizzle reel and then you're going to get a bill for $20,000. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yep. And it uh, turned out to be all legit. And, uh, and while I was there, they said, well, why don't you just sit down and talk to your daughter? And we literally sat on an old stump and talked for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. And they sent that off the network. Network kind of came back and said, well, we want you to do this show called Bargain Mansions. We want you to buy old houses in the redeveloping area of Kansas City. So that would be kind of what's called the Hyde Park District. It's right downtown where all of the old warehousing district has been upgraded, turned into restaurants, mm -hmm. theaters, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we started doing that with some of these most homes you've ever seen. Uh, really? Yeah. They were, they had carriage houses in their day. They had ballrooms on the third floor. They, ah, oh, cool. Yeah. They were really neat. And, uh, and we started doing that. We did uh, a, a handful of shows for them. Uh, next thing you know, they wanted a season. So we were on DIY then. Uh, we spent two years on DIY, the, and, and then they needed uh, they they asked us if to go on to uh, HGTV. Actually, they didn't ask; they they kind of did it. And yep. um, <laughs> and who are you going to to yeah. say no? <laughs> they own the show. Yeah, and so right. uh, they took a show. They took the series off of DIY, re-edited, and showed him again on HGTV. And and our audience progressively went. Originally, it was like 85000 for the first mm -hmm. pilot. Then it was 250000 a show for like six. Then we went to HGTV, and it went to one and a quarter million. And wow. then this year in 3A, it was more like two and a quarter to two and a half million viewers. So that's what we're doing. We're buying the, the houses that a lot of people don't want. I mean, some of these don't have windows. They don't have doors. They, the foundation is caving in. The roof has been bad. But sure. they're too classic in our opinion, to tear down. Yeah. And, yeah. and so um, in some cases here in Kansas City, we haven't gotten any like this, but you can get them almost free if you'll just redevelop. Uh, wow. We paid for a little bit better ones than that. Mm -hmm. And um, not much, but a little. And, yeah. and started from that. And uh, the show seems to be a hit. Uh, the, nice. The father-daughter thing appeals to a lot of people. Yeah, uh, and I have a unique relationship. We we've we're as much friends as we are father daughter. Uh, yeah, it's a little yeah, that comes across. I sure. Take orders, yeah. but I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you let her pretty much run things, right? You know, it, it, exactly. It's her yeah. show. Yeah. I that's the way I look at it. Uh, I've kind of had my uh, fling at things and had my businesses over the years, and uh, and and I'm. Uh, I'm enjoying this because I get to do it with Tamara. I'm enjoying it because it's something I like. Uh, it, yeah. it's, it's a very gratifying thing when you get done with a house that's been, just been trashed and you turn it into something really beautiful. And I don't know if you've seen any of the shows. I, yes. It seems yeah. that, that the uh, the houses are well uh, 
respected as being nicely done and, and attractive. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I love her designs too, you know, and the finishing touches and, you know, it just really, they, they look beautiful. They look absolutely gorgeous. So I think, I think the relationship between father and daughter yeah. is what really it takes off because, you know, you always see the husband and wife and mm -hmm. I mean, and then the, the conflict and the friction and, you know, different ideas and, you know, I want this, but you know, you're going to get that, but you know, father and daughter, I think that's just, it's, it is, you're right. It's very unique. Well, you know, I'm I'm sitting here as a as a father of a daughter that's 21, and I couldn't imagine her and I working on a TV <laughs> show or anywhere near each other. To be honest with yeah. you, I love her, but uh, yeah, no, I don't think that would go well. So, you know, well, I don't see a lot of you know friction between you guys. You know, you guys seem to, like you said, you know, it's her show, and you know, you're there to help out and you know teach and and do you know the stuff that you know how to do. So, I think that's that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, we disagree. I mean, the, the, sure. she picks colors. She picks things. Sometimes I tell her I wouldn't do that, and she ignores me. And <laughs> yep. goes right on. And and I've kind of learned to just uh, hold my peace on some of that because she's generally right. Uh, okay. She does listen to me, and, and that makes it uh, satisfying. So mm -hmm. now, now you, you kind of – so your daughter's 21. You kind of understand yep. what I was saying when I – when I said I, I thought they weren't learning anything and uh, just a lot of complaining, but uh -huh. yep. you, you may be surprised as time <laughs> yeah. goes. On. I'm looking forward to that surprise, Ward. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I haven't had it yet, but yeah. <laughs> fingers crossed. Hopefully it's coming. Yeah, hopefully it's coming. Is right. Well, tell so, me a little bit about you guys. Where where where'd you get your start? Wow. Okay. Wow. Nobody's wow. interviewed us in a while. After prison. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I yeah. yeah when I came from Italy from the when I just dealt with the Pope he came out of prison right and we bumped into right. each other in a car accident and I said hey what do you want to do with the rest of our lives oh, no actually oh we we we've known each other for over thirty years now yeah, yeah. and um, it was actually uh, it started out as <clears throat> I was a rock star and he was working for an entertainment group. And I be I stopped being a rock star and became <laughs> I wanted to eat, so I became a handyman <laughs> on the shoreline here in Connecticut <laughs> and a union carpenter. And uh, he got out of the business because he was just making so much money he couldn't hide it anymore. <laughs> so he figured he'd get into they might, into they might get rich slow scheme here <laughs> in home remodeling. <laughs> and one day I was getting my truck serviced, and he was getting his truck serviced yeah. at the same gas station. And we were like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" And we actually partnered up as doing a handyman business together. Mm -hmm. And um, Colin is so good at it. He went out and we got to the point where, okay, Colin went out and he would get the jobs and he'd leave me on the job site and I would do the work. And he'd go, you need anything? i go, yeah, double cheeseburger from McDonald's. <laughs> and he'd come back, get double cheeseburger. <laughs> Keep going. I was, and Sometimes I need, you got to feed him, Ward, you know? You got to feed him yeah. because if you don't, I got the nickname as Mr. Wilson. Yes, he was get, Mr. Wilson. I get hangry. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, you feed too? You got I, I have that problem. Hangry in the whole family. My son's yeah, that yeah. Problem. yeah, my son's like that too, yeah. So, yeah, so we've been, I mean, I've been doing the remodeling thing for about 15, 16 years now. We started off as a handyman business, then turned into a full home remodel. Uh, then I brought the handyman business back, so I kind of run both of those now. Um so yeah, it's been it's been good. Um, you know, we decided to to do a podcast. Uh, actually, Marissa, our, our producer, came to me first and was like, "We need to do a podcast." And I'm like, "Why?" And she's like, "Because of this, 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 social media, social media, blah, blah, blah." So I said, "Okay." And I started listening to podcasts, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm bored." And I'm like, nobody's going to want to listen to me talk for 30 minutes, let alone I don't want to hear me talk for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So after a couple of weeks went by, I thought of uh, my buddy here, Jimmy, and I'm like, you know what? If he'll do it, this would be a lot of fun. So here we are almost three years later. And, uh, yeah, we're in season three. You know, no B or A or anything No else. B, just, A, Z or whatever. Season three. No. So, <laughs> yeah, but so. this is us. This is the way we are <laughs> on camera, off camera, on the microphones and out. We're just – I'm full of sarcasm, and he's just, you know, he's the logic thinker. And I am too at times, but uh, that's and, how we get through it all. And, you know, where, you know, it's funny you said how you're enjoying uh, doing the show and stuff like that. You know, for me, this is like the one thing I really enjoy every week. You know, it's a it's a way we get to just step out of our our business selves and uh, just kind of be goofy and have some fun and yeah. meet some really cool people like yourself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully, you know, 
give some advice to certain people that it can actually be helpful, uh, but hopefully entertain them at the same time. So we, we can't believe it's been three years. It's yeah, like, no, it's man. crazy. It's like, wow, where did it go? Right. It's just like, you know, like uh, I, I said, think it's been a good journey. Say the same thing. I'm sorry, did yeah. I interrupt? No, no, you're good. No, no, no. no we're the same. Uh, no, it's good. I think Tamara and I would say the same thing. This is, this is, I think the eighth year. I mean, it started like one, the the sizzle reel. And you and they come back and they tell you, oh, it's just awesome. We love it, you know. And they don't hear anything for nine months. And you're like, well, <laughs> yeah. let's go on about our tell lives. You know? And yeah. and, uh, and you're about ready to give up on it. And then all of a sudden somebody comes back and says, well, let's do a pilot. And so they do a pilot and they don't air it for six months. And you're like, well, they must not have liked it, you know. And then all of a sudden it shows and they come back and they liked it. And so yeah, forever for us to get our first show but or our first season anyway. But uh, yeah. no, I, I, uh, I it's, it's real interesting to me. I, I've been in a variety of businesses. I started out as a, a chemist for Union Carbide Applications. Oh, chemist. wow. And, and then uh, quit that and went into business for myself as a bankruptcy uh, specialist. I took over about 30 some businesses that were bankrupt and I turned them around. Right. Nice. Not true. I turned about 30% of them around. The other yeah. 70 I had to liquidate, but they were bankrupt when I got them. I didn't feel too bad about that. I right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Right. And, and then that, I ended up getting into the medical industry because of a bankruptcy that involved doctors and medicine and, and um, started building hospitals and surgery centers and owning them and operating them. So for the last 25 years, I've built 30 some medical projects that we owned and operated and hired docs, hired nurses, build, collected, did all that stuff. So I've encouraged my children to be entrepreneurs. And, and that's one of the things that I, I, I kind of like to talk a little bit about is motivation to young people to get out and do just what you guys are doing. Just but that is out. so tough to do. That is so that, that is the mountain to climb with, mm-hmm. with yeah. the, with the youth today. You know, um, Dude. I was a mentor for the, for the, Union Carpenters, and we try to get, and Colin does too. We try, you know, we when we see kids and they don't know which way to go. We just say, "Listen, you will, you can make a good figure of money at the end of the year if you take up a trade, whether right? It be carpentry, plumbing, electrical, electrical. Don't worry, you will not go hungry. No, you will never go hungry in this business. So you'll you love. Know? I've been trying to. T- I've got an eighteen-year-old granddaughter. Uh, yeah. I've got nine grandchildren, eighteen to four, and. Wow. Uh, Oh, actually five. The youngest one had a birthday last night. Nice. Mm. Happy birthday. And I've been trying to convince my children not to go to college, my grandchildren. I I think it's totally unnecessary. Now, that's not true for some of them. Some of them are not mature enough. But this 18-year-old granddaughter of mine is 28. And, 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 you know, I mean, she may be 18, but she thinks like she's 28. Yeah, and, and she's got all the tools, and I, I've been trying to convince her to be an electrician. I've got mm. a friend who would train her, get her through the whatever it is, the journeyman or not journeyman, but the apprenticeship. The apprentice, yeah. To get her license, and I, I, I told her, I said, if you do this, you and I'll own Kansas City in ten to fifteen years. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There, there is so many women out there that don't want a man coming into their house when they're home alone. And we could have a full independent electrical company with almost just women. Mm. Good thinking. Yeah. That's good thinking. That is. Let's do it, guys. Come on. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey, we're tired over here. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. Oh, my I don't gosh. Sounds like any work at all for us. I think. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm with you too. I, you know, I, I do think that college serves a purpose, uh, lawyers, uh, doctors, nurses, that sort of thing where they have to learn certain things that maybe they can't learn totally out on the, you know, out in, in real life. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, the, 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 what the lessons that we learn through, you know, hard knocks, you know, that's, that's kind of the best education you can hit, get. Hit the ground running and just go out there and do yeah. it. You know, yeah, it's it's yeah. almost like, a, Go ahead. you know, it's like it's like uh, film school. You go to a trade school, you learn how to do film for a couple of years where basically they give you the kind of the techniques and they don't guarantee you a job when you're out there. And, you know, you know, you before 
You're not going to get a job after two years. You just have you you kind of have the basics of it. Well, what I did was I got involved in film. I jumped into it, and I would jump into like uh, an independent film company that was shooting a film, and they needed an actor, and I would just go in as an extra, and I would learn what not to do. You know, you know, from feeding the from feeding the cast and crew to just their shoots and whatever they did, and then I dealt with. You know, professionals. I, I was in the room with professionals, with with major motion picture directors, and it was amazing because you just take all that and you all mix it together, and that was my education. And it didn't cost me; it just costed me my time. But I would never would have gotten that if I went to school for it. Right. You know, and I'm not bashing <clears throat> trade school, not whatsoever. <clears throat> but you got to do both. You know, you just can't. Yeah, I, I think you have to apply what you know, and if you don't apply, if you don't know it. Get into a circle of people where you are the dumbest person there because you learn so much if you just shut your mouth and you hear it all and you and you observe it, you know. Same thing with the trades. I mean, carpentry, mm-hmm. plumbing, you know. I learned a lot. I went to uh, years ago before, when I got into the trade. Um, I didn't know how to read a tape measure, but I answered the I answered a paper to a carpenter. He said he needed a helper, and I said, listen, I will be there on time. I'll be there every day on time, and I want to learn. And he said, "You're the guy I want." And I started on Monday, and we had a we had a great relationship. You know that whole positive, and we had a blast. We had so much fun. You know, a lot of fun stories, a lot of great stuff. And I learned so much from that guy. Yeah, and we, it goes on today. Yeah. him and me. You know, you said okay. you were a rock star. I didn't know you were a movie actor and producer too. The uh, list goes on and on. I, more. Trust I, me. I am man yeah. who wears many hats. We'll talk about it after the show. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, done that too. I've done yeah. it all. I, you know, well, life is, like yeah. mom, mom says, opportunity only has one pair of knockers. So I drive at any <laughs> any opportunity. So that's it. <laughs> well, you know, the thing that I, I tell all the young people is don't wait until everything is perfect because it never is perfect. You never have enough money. You never have enough jobs. You never have enough tools. You will always be waiting if that's your excuse. And Just, you'll have a lot of regret. You'll have a lot of regret oh, if you don't if what, you don't jump at it. That is, I went home the day that I'm, I I had a great job. I was making real money and as for the time. And I went home and told my wife, I don't care if I got to dig ditches. I'm not going back to that job one more day. I am starting my own thing. She about had a heart attack. (laughs) We had health insurance, Uh little kids under 12. and, And I said, I just can't do this. I can't go the rest of my life and think at the end of it, that I didn't make the hard choice and go for it. I, and, right. let, and I instead let everybody else make all my decisions for me in my life. The, the one rule I followed is if I'm going to fail, I want it to be my decisions that caused me to fail, not someone else's. Right. Great. That's great. <clears throat> good great for you thing. and actually good for her too. Yeah. Yeah. So, scary. That's it is scary. scary as hell. I've, I've, I've changed careers a couple of times myself and my wife has been, freaking out because <laughs> she's not a risk taker at all uh you know and then doing what we do we you know this this industry is risk taking on a regular basis yep. you know it doesn't it, it's not conformed to be a certain way day after day after day i mean mm-hmm. you know with the trends and everything else that goes on you know this industry is you know up and down up and down so mm-hmm. yeah yeah it must be amazing i just feel like telling some people if you could be in my head for one day it would explode. <laughs> you would throw my head back. Yeah. Yeah. You deal you, with this. You keep it. <laughs> you see what a crazy guy I am, man. I don't want yeah. that. Uh, so when you started doing the show, were you were you done with your business at that point? Or were you still running your business and doing the show? Uh, I'm I'm still running my business today. Wow. But good for you. I have um, I have quite a number of employees and mm-hmm. uh, and they are quite good at what they do. And I, I've given them some ownership, uh, shared some ownership with yep. individuals over the years and made choices that that I was happy with that. And and I don't have to own it all. I just, I, I wanted my life to simplify. And uh, I mean, I've had two or 300 employees re- responding to me daily. And at some point in time, there's nothing that they can surprise you with. Right. <laughs> Maybe something new once in a while, but they can't shock you anymore. Yeah. And and I was just ready to move on from that. So we have mm. a management company in Wichita. Uh, we employ 50 people there, I guess. And uh, they uh, 
they know more about running a hospital or a surgery center or any of those things I'm involved with than, than I do. So right. now I do the negotiation of starting a new one, maybe, or mm-hmm. um, uh, just some of the, along those lines of things that I do. And, and, and the other thing I do that I really love is if one of my grandchildren call and say, hey, Gramps, we need you today. I'm there. Yeah, uh, that's nice. I, I can give up. The work. Have some. All right. Don't be great. So, nice. so on, great. on that, on that, on that ward. Um, so out of the day, out of the, out of the eight hours or 12 hours or 14 hours that you work, what is your perfect time? Do you, do you find it in the day that with being so busy either with the show or with your other jobs and everything that you run, is there a certain part of the day or a certain time where you are just, this is what it's all about that euphoric moment of 15 or 20 minutes of the day that you really, you're inside yourself and you're really, really happy. Do you ever, do you get that every day? I know it's a loaded, it's not a loaded question because I'm asking you that because that's what I search for every day when I go to work every day, whether it be in the morning or in the afternoon or at night, I need it. I need a 15 or 20 minutes to either reflect or to get ready, uh, and it's my sweet spot. Do you do you ever get a chance to do that? Do you ever do that? I th- I think of it just a little bit uh, different, Jim. I yeah. I think of it as um, because my life is pretty diverse. Yeah. The phone call I get, every meeting I have is considerably different than the last, and so every it, it it's 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 maybe a poor analogy, but. It's kind of like mowing your lawn. You know, it needs mowed. You go out and you do it. And at the end, you stand back and you can look at it and say, that's, it looks great. I feel good about it. Every call I have or meeting I have is about something else. And did I accomplish something? And mm-hmm. it constructive? And, uh, or will it lead to something? And, and so I can, look at, I can look at almost every one of those uh, in a day's time and feel good or bad about them. And, and, and at the end of the day, at the, one thing I do do almost at the end of every day is, is look at it and say, was I the best man I could be in every respect, um, morally, professionally, uh, an investment guru or whatever you want to call me. I mean, mm-hmm. was I, was I good at what I did and can I be better tomorrow? And, and so don't think I've really answered your question the way you ask it, but that's kind of think, the way it is my day. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I think you did because learn by example, because of all that you do and all the hats that you do wear and what you're doing, um, you still remain positive. I mean, and you achieve at a healthy pace, if, if I could say that, if it is my judgment to you. Uh, because there are so many people out there who are trying to achieve or have achieved and they're freaking miserable. You know, it's just like they're trying to get to the top of the hill and they're not enjoying the journey as they go. And from watching you and hearing you, I mean, it seems like that you enjoy your journey as you go on on the with the show and your lifestyle and everything else. Since you made that transition years ago saying, I can't do this anymore. I got to do this. You stepped off the cliff and you've been flying ever since. I went from thinking about how could I save enough money to retire almost every day. Right. To feeling like I don't ever want to retire. That's great. That's amazing. That's great. And that's amazing. It, 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 it's an amazing, it is a good feeling. I, I, but maybe one of the key factors for me and, and, and I grew up, I didn't have a silver spoon. My dad was a, had a farm. He farmed 600 acres out in Western Kansas. Well, even back in 1960, that really wasn't much of a farm. Uh, he was barely paying his bills. Um, but he gave it, he, he gave us great insight, great motivation, did more for us maybe than anybody could do with a hundred times that amount of money that he had. Uh, money to me, I worried a lot about money when I couldn't pay my bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, so, but once I met that nut of being pretty comfortable at paying my bills, then the rest of this just becomes a game of success. It's not a game up to paying your bills. No, nope. but after you paid your bills, it's a game. And, mm-hmm. and 
I look at it that way. I don't have to keep every dollar that comes into my company. I, 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 I keep a, a reasonable amount. I'm very happy with what I get. I'm very happy to share with my partners. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the success of getting up every day and doing something pretty good. Does it happen every day? Of course not. Not but sure. It happens pretty frequently. And and some of the successes have nothing to do with money. There's a young man that, two young men, one from uh, Brazil and one from uh, Spain. And yeah. they both got to the United States with, uh, with uh, tennis. They were tennis players. And so they got full ride scholarships. Um, and one of them got a straight A degree. I think it was banking. And the other one got business and, and almost straight A's as well. And they, but they needed their green cards so they to stay here, and uh, they got their green cards by playing, having a job. Well, the only job they could get was playing tennis, so they did mm. that. And I love to play tennis, so I'm playing with them, and we're talking. We get to know, them. and I, I think the world of these guys. They are incredibly they're six foot three. They're great looking. They've got a little accent in their voice, which is <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. And, and and they're and they're smart, and they're just trying to figure out how to get ahead. And so, I get nothing from communicating with them on a regular basis except gratification that I've done something good. Both of them now have moved into jobs that I encouraged them to. I mean, I I actually got them interviews, maybe not in the job they ended up taking, but I convinced them to start taking interviews with financial companies, with banks, with whoever, and. And they still come back to me and ask me for my advice on their careers and what they should go forward with. What a satisfying event that is. I, I feel like that's a real success when they call me and we talk for a while. And I mean, Absolutely. I'm older. They're in their late 20s now, and they're succeeding beyond your wildest expectations. And I'm just like, wow. That's great. That's great. So how about now <laughs> when you get back to the show and you're working with your daughter? Do you get you get this? I'm sure you must get the same satisfaction on a on a on a totally different scale, right? You're going from from you know you, you're going from a from a different job to to working with your daughter. That show it must do a lot for you also. I mean, bam! Look what you've created. Look what was destroyed. Look what will come back up. And you get to work with your daughter, and you guys get along, <laughs> and you're having fun. It's unfair. Isn't it? That we should it be is, to a lot of people. Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, actually, I feel I feel it, I feel it, very it, happy for you. I do. Absolutely. You know, it, it's 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 different challenge though. Just just like Colin said with his twenty one year old daughter. Yeah. You know, actually, these kids that I'm mentoring listen to me better than my own children. There. Of course. You know, of absolutely. Course. <laughs> of course. But it's okay. All, all of my children have been are entrepreneurs. They're all super talented. Right. I I could be happier with the family I've raised and uh, the responsible citizens they are and, and they're out self supporting themselves. And gosh, what more is a father supposed to do? That's it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I, I look forward to being able to say the same. Dude, you're blessed. Both of you yeah. guys are blessed. Yes. You know? No, no. I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have, I have no complaints, no complaints. Well, that's great. Do you have children? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have any biological children. No. Okay. He's got like stepkids. I got stepkids. Yep. I got stepchildren. They're and pretty... I'm I'm a father to them. Mm -hmm. So and I've and I've done the fatherly thing and I've done the whole the gamut and it it's been very rewarding for me also. And they have worked with me in the field. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, when they come home from college or if they were in between jobs, my my stepson worked with us mm -hmm. and he was fantastic. He was really he was great. Yeah, he was. And my stepdaughter came in. And she needed a job for the summer. It was so funny. We still laugh about it. She was going to do some painting work for me during the summer. And I came downstairs, and she was already in a robe having a coffee. She says, yeah, I don't think this is going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> she, she quit the first day. She, she quit <laughs> without even putting her slippers back on for crying out loud. But then we laughed about that, and then she came back with me, and she worked with me uh, the next year. And it was, I have to say, it was awesome. It was so awesome having her 
on the job site with me, work with me. Emily, she was just like, she was fantastic. We had fun and I got to buy them lunch and we had lunch together and we'd go back at and we'd hit it hard. And it was so funny because they were trying to sell this house that we were painting and the woman was so down about it. And I'm, I'm a very positive person. I go, this house is going to sell. Don't you worry. You're going to get the right people in here. and It's going to sell. Don't worry about it. Trust me. I have to say, we left at 4.30. They had some people come in to look at the house at 5 o'clock. The paint wasn't even dry on the doors, and the house was sold. They walked into the house and said, we love this house. We want it, and they bought it just like that. You need a team. You need yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So are you guys going to ask me any questions about behind the studs or under the studs or anywhere else? <laughs> well, we have to quiz you about our show? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, just one last thought on that last topic, though. My son came to work for me for a day, and it took about a week for him to stop complaining about how sore he was. So, <laughs> yeah, he wasn't built for manual labor. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, yeah. you know, isn't that the truth, though? But it changes. Yeah. And, yeah. We'll and see. Remember what you taught him and what you did. Yeah. It, it's pretty amazing. I, I swear I didn't yeah. think any of my kids were going to be. <laughs> hard workers or know yeah. anything about construction i was just like wow where did i go wrong when they're about 18 I'm like, where did i go wrong yeah she so said, did you guys do any recording of the show during covid the last few months or yeah we have recorded the whole time we have been really um everybody on the set has been being tested regularly for COVID, uh, we've been, everybody's been wearing masks. Of course, Tamara and I don't, but we are family and we're the only ones that are kind of close together. Everybody else is 10 feet away and no more. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's been, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's been this, this three B season has been incredibly intense. We, we had, was it five months to do six houses? Wow. And, that's nuts, man. That's crazy. It was crazy, and and it created um, it it created a lot of stress. I mean, we absolutely were, oh, we yeah. were working. Uh, I think Tamara put in twenty five straight days of filming and working. Uh, a lot of the crew did. Uh, so I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever been on a set, but well, you were in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, we have fifteen to twenty, I guess, people around the set every day that we're filming, not counting mm -hmm. any construction workers. So there's another six to eight, 10 construction workers. And, and so to your point about COVID, uh, a lot of the construction crews had to limit the number of people they had on the, on the job site because wow. it, it was, I, I don't know what the rule was, but it must've been some kind of square footage rule. And you could only have six guys for every 2000 square feet or something like that. Mm -hmm. So instead of having, 10 guys work in the house every day. There were five. So that slowed that process down. And, um, you know, so our show is totally spontaneous. There, there's no, it's totally unscripted. Yeah. Uh, the directors say, okay, I want you to go into that bathroom and talk about the new tile and the countertops and the sinks. Okay. Yep. Tamara and I have an easy time doing that. We're going to do it. <laughs> anyway. yep. so we just go in and we start BSing about, uh, you know, well, what do you, what color are you going to do or what size sink or how much tile or to the ceiling or to the floor or all the floor or whatever. Yeah. And yep. Uh, after about three weeks of continuous filming and construction and 10, 11 hour days, mm. it was kind of hard to be spontaneous and, <laughs> and cheery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Cheery and, and, and the crew too. Cause I know, the crew stays late. They they're there a lot later because they got to break down. So they're, yeah. You get to go home and then they're they're doing their thing <laughs> to break down, get ready for the show. Is there certain materials that you like to work with when you're doing the show? Uh, if it's if it's not makeshift, do you like to? Is there certain like countertops you like to work with, or tile, or lighting, or other material when you're doing the show? I I wouldn't say that i would say there are certain things about doing uh the houses that i like to do i'm not i know i'm portrayed as doing a lot of the demo and and i do but mm -hmm. uh, what i really like to do is the finish work and so i, right. I don't I, I can i can do tile i can do trim i i can do unique things if you want it and and i really like that i like the creative part 
So demo is just a sledgehammer. It's yeah. okay. It gets done quickly. But um, I like the creative part of coming up with helping Tamar come up with the ideas and uh, or or at least at least give my two cents. And mm -hmm. and then I like doing it. I, I it's kind of like that lawn mowing analogy I gave you. When you go yeah. to a bathroom and you do the tile, it's so nice to walk out of there at the end of the day. Mm. And, Ooh, that looks really pretty darn good. I did a good right. job. Right. Yeah. I mean, I went from corporate America to doing this and it was because I love to be able to look at stuff at the end of the day and go, wow, yeah, we did, did that. that, you yeah. know, and how cool that is, you know, and any house that I've ever worked on, you know, for like, you know, building a house. Yeah. I drive by the house, you know, every what couple of years or something, you find yourself in that neighborhood or something you drive by and you're like, wow, I built that house. I helped build that house. And it's, and it's very rewarding. It is. And I drive by the casinos and go, I built that casino. I built yeah. that casino and I built Pfizer. Oh my God. I built that too. When I was in the union, you know? So yeah. that was something. Yeah. But I, I understand. Yeah. I get that. Do you ever get, when you're on set and you're working on the show, do you ever get lost in the craft? Meaning you forget the crew is around because you're oh, doing yeah. your thing. You know, you right? know actually I, I kind of think you know, Tamara was really nervous when we first, when she first went on camera, it was really? like, Oh, I mean, she was sweating bullets. I'm just, <laughs> I got nothing to lose here. Let's just have fun. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So I've always, I, I think that's what makes it easy to have fun on the show is that I don't, maybe there's a couple of things. Our, our lead camera crew have become friends. They, they aren't a camera crew. It's the same camera crew almost all the time. And mm -hmm. so that's really nice. Yeah. Our, our uh, our gaffes and our whatever else they're they're kind of the same guys uh, all the time. I mean, we I'd say eighty percent of the crew is always kind of the same, and, and we sit around and talk, you know, in blank spots here and there, and we get to know each other and we know their families and we've had lunch and dinners and different things together. So it it, it isn't intimidating to be in front of them. They know my food paws. I mean, they. Mm -hmm. They know that I'm going to get edited 10 times because I don't know the politically correct thing to say. <laughs> God bless you, man. Hey, I got somebody just like right that here, right here. Right Jesus. Here. <laughs> I got a horse bit in my mouth. Pull yeah. it back. Pull it back. Pull it back. <laughs> Some of the things that, I, that, I, that we ever do on the show, they cut out because they're yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. But no, it's it's so it's really easy. It, it yes, I get lost all the time because I don't even know they're there. It's just Tamara and I talking. Yeah, mm, nice, dude. That is really good that you got a crew. The crew is your family now. Yeah, you know what I mean. You can joke yeah. around. You can laugh. At, you all know each other, which is yep. fantastic. I just spent an hour on the phone before you guys with our lead camera guy, and yep. and we're not even filming anymore. This goes over till next year, and. He's just a great guy. I just Ty Jones name, and he's he's interesting. Not just a cameraman. He's got a life, and yeah. he's been an entrepreneur, and he rents his equipment all over the country. And yeah, he just you, you, it's kind of funny. You you talk to anybody in business for themselves, you're going to learn something from them. They have an interesting life. They've done something well, yeah. unique. You guys have an interesting life. I you're I mean TV or uh, a rock star, uh, a movie star. Oh yeah! I, oh, I don't man. know about oh, yeah. Colin. Well, he doesn't sound like he's done anything but construction. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's no. see. I was corporate America for many years. Yeah. Uh, suit and tie guy. Um, yeah. Doing the hotel business thing, uh, food and beverage, and you know, did my time and got to the point where I said I always wanted to be. I was going to be the general manager of a full service hotel with over a hundred people working with me and everything. I got there and I was like, no, this isn't for me. I'm, <laughs> I'm done. That's not going to work yeah. out. So, and I've done uh, entertainment as well. Uh, music stuff. Um, I had a little career in that for a while. Uh, doing well, that's festivals how we met. Stuff. That's yep. how we met. Yep. So I was touring, I was touring in this, in, in Connecticut with my band and uh, it was, it was a mutual friend. It was a lighting, actually it was a lighting designer in New York city who lived in Connecticut and said, Hey, I got this guy. They got a radio station. They're looking for bands, and you'd be great. Would they would love to have you? And that's how it all happened. And I ended up going to Connecticut, and I never, I really never left. I still toured, but I came back to Connecticut. And uh, Colin was working for this entertainment company, and mm -hmm. it went from there. So, <clears throat> so what'd you play in the band? I was a singer. 
Can you get long us? hair, brother? Have, have we, have we yeah, ever said what the name example? of the band? We never said the name of the band. We've never said the name of the band on this show out of all these years. We've never said the name. I was in a band called Trouble Tribe, and they were, we were signed to Chrysalis Records. Mm-hmm. And I was a singer. And <clears throat> it was one of those things that was just took me years to get there, but it, that's what like Colin did. He fought to get to you know be the manager of a, of a hotel. And I, since I was 17, 18, I wanted to be a singer in a rock and roll band. Even though I was going to school for theater and communications and I did all that, I always had this music in the back of my head. So after I went to college for theater and communications and then I went to Boston University and I was in a couple of years, um, I couldn't afford college anymore. So I went home. I says I don't want to do this anymore and, and drain my parents' you know bank dry. I said I want to get into music, and they were like, "Well, you're going to take a trade." So I ended up going back to communications trade school, and I got into a I got into a cover band, and then from there I just said I'm gonna I'm going for the brass ring, and I wouldn't stop. When that band broke up, I went with another one, and that broke up, and I went to New York City, and I was with these guys who were like you have now, were families to me, were brothers to me. And uh, we like we didn't stop until we got there and we ended up getting there and we got so close, even though we were signed and we toured and we were on MTV and we did all this great stuff. And, you know, something that, you know, you would write a book about. It was awesome. It was a great time. Um, Chris was sold to EMI Thorne. So we were in the red. We weren't in the black. So we got dropped and I started my own band. And I was touring and that's when I met Colin. Mm-hmm. So. And that's when I just like I did a total shift. Once I moved to Connecticut, I was just like, okay, the rock and roll thing is just not going to happen anymore. It, you know, it's it's a different mindset when you're not. To, I'm not putting any musicians down because I've met so many great musicians. The mindset of being a professional um, is different than being in a cover band uh, playing in a bar. You know, you just it's hard to do that. It was hard to do that for me. So I picked up the trade. Uh, that I learned when I was out in Long Island, and uh, I stuck with it. And I said, "I'll st- I'll stick with my artistic work too, as far as doing film work and back getting back into acting, which I did, and um, and that's what I've been doing. And this has been an amazing outlet for Colin and myself, um, which works out. It's been working out perfectly. We love doing this. It's mm-hmm. a great show. We get to meet people like you in all various types of of the construction industry, and." Um, I get to be the people person that I love to be, to be the mayor and to be people <laughs> and make them laugh and learn something, you know? Mayor? <laughs> Jesus. And I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm still stupid. We'll yeah. make you the mayor of Niantic. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor of Niantic? Yeah. Yeah, I want my float. I'll, be, I'll have a float. I'll talk I'll to the right people. Everybody. Don't you worry. I'll talk to the people. I'm Don't waiting worry. to break into some song here any moment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, just make sure you look up on YouTube. That's Trouble it. Tribe. Yeah, you can yep. see it. You'll yep. see it all. Wait. You'll see it. See it all. You so just got to imagine his hair guitar. is like a lot longer. You see my guitars in the back, I guess. And you know, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, four years ago, a little less, yep. I, I have never taken a music lesson. I had never played an instrument. I, mm-hmm. you know, kind of once in a while said, oh, I'd sure like to do that, but I never did it. And I went out and bought myself a, a really nice Taylor guitar. And nice. Started taking lessons, and mm-hmm. uh, I've been working at it uh, ever since. And I'm probably not very good, but <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. And and I've got a few songs I can sing, and I'm not dancing yet, but I'm singing. All right, all right, yeah. dude. If you if you <laughs> dance, then you've just you just filled the gamut. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> what do you not do? Right, right, right. Sing and dance. <laughs> Yeah. Build hospitals, <laughs> and I deal with my daughter every right. day. Yeah, what the heck? I, well, that's what I kind of joke with everybody. I said I did all these hospitals, I did all this construction, and then just naturally it led into tourism. So what the heck? <laughs> sure, yeah, right. Course, I mean, well, yeah. What was going to be next? Yep. No, <laughs> next week I'll be out saving whales. You know. <laughs> so I wanted to tell you one thing about what the, you asked me. What I really liked in the houses, or something, one thing or another. Yeah. One thing I really like doing is taking the old houses. And yeah. so often their foundations are, are really bad and they're, un, they're not level. They're sinking in the middle or, or whatever they're doing. And, you know, I, I've really, there's a kick in it for me to put jacks under a house, start lifting it up a little bit at a time, getting it back up to the level and, and, and then go from there to rebuild it. Because 
if you don't start with a decent foundation, man, you are constantly fixing unsquare doors and, sure, right. yeah, you know, windows that won't open and God knows what else. So <laughs> I, I, I really, are you I, just using, are you using the 18 ton pump jacks? Is that what you just did? Crib it? Is that what you're doing? I bought bridge jacks. So they're jacks that they actually use on the interstate highways to oh. lift up the bridges when they have to do maintenance underneath. Oh, the man. Jeez. And, well, and they don't mess around. I think one of them could lift the whole house if you could arrange that. But yeah, it's geared super low and they're, they weigh about 75 pounds a piece. They're impossible mm. to carry around. But, um, you know, they, they, they just move a little bit. So whenever you crank on them, so you put them in the center of the house, three of them along the, the beam, maybe if that's what needs straightened up and you put a steel pipe underneath it. And, and today you go in and you move it half an inch mm -hmm. and, and then you kind of go do demo or whatever for a week and you shake the house up and then you go back the next week and you raise it another half inch and, mm -hmm. and maybe you need three inches. So over six, eight weeks, you shake, rattle, and roll to your rock background, and <laughs> and you uh, and you get the house leveled out, and you kind of get some things um, stabilized, and it does make a world of difference in moving forward from there. Absolutely, that yeah, makes sense. Do you like working with the old stone foundation at at, at times if it calls for it? I, I, a lot of these old houses are stone foundation, and it took me a while to learn to like them. And the reason I finally did was to understand them. They were never made not to hold back water or to hold back water. They were never made to do that. Correct. They were mm -hmm. Made to leak. And if you look in most of the old houses, there are channels in the floor. Kind of. I mean, the the floor was if it if it was poured, yeah. it was poured so that it all kind of sloped to a floor drain. And the reason was that the water came through those foundations as fast as it possibly could. When you try to seal up those foundations with some kind of cement or, or whatever and hold the water back, that's when you start destroying those foundations. They last, yeah. they last a long, long time. If you just let them drain and, and the, the limestone, well, so that's what they are here is limestone. Yeah, uh, not granite or anything else. And the limestone needs to stay wet to to stay solid. If you completely dry them out, they become brittle and they break. And so you just leave them alone. Let them let them drain. Mm. Their ceilings are too low to do anything in those basements anyway. Right. Yeah. Those well, are... uh, mine's taller. So I do have a stone wall. I'm getting to this. But um, I did seal it. Um, I put a, uh, I, the, the guy that was working with me, he put on, uh, he styrofoamed the cracks and he did a slurry on top of that. And I was just going to put a, uh, like a locks on, on top of a UGL waterproofing. And then I was thinking about building a cinder block wall in front of it, you know, um, and then waterproofing it as I went up. So I would go up a few, you know, I would pin it, you know, rebar it pin it, cement, and then as I go up about three block, I would put the waterproofing behind it, and as we go. And that cinder block wall would probably only be, uh, uh, I would say, maybe six inches. Well, no, it would have to be a foot. It would have to be a foot in, foot off that stone wall. That's what I'm thinking. I haven't done that yet. Um, well, I might make a suggestion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be so bold. Um before you do that wall, you, you can do that wall and it'll be fine. Yeah. But dig out, break out the foundation. Yeah. The drain tile in that goes to a sump pump and capture that water before it gets to your, your block, your new block. And so put the drain behind the block, behind the block, yes. put the drain behind the block. So take six inches out of your floor out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, floor, yeah. Go down in, you know, dig out the dirt a little ways. Dig a, uh, put a four inch drain tile, a perforated drain tile in there yeah. uh, or bigger if you can, and then surround it with rock, like one inch rock. And, yeah. and you can cement over it if you want, but yeah. then, then build your wall on the inside of that. That yeah. way 
water will be captured before it even gets to your wall and and will go to a sump pump and and be taken out and you'll have a dry basement yeah hmm. okay that you just thank you you got more work to do no, no, that's what I wanted to do. Now, yeah. that's what we talked about. That's yeah. what I talked about doing. Yeah, well, if, you don't, if you don't do that and you finish your basement, then you're working on it all the time because it's going to be wet. And it's yeah. super mm-hmm. I yeah. So I did this through experience. I, I, I went through the effort of sealing it up and wondering why the heck can't I get this ever sealed? Well, the water pressure gets so great that it forces its way through some little crack somewhere. And yeah. Mm. And so finally, I, I actually, there, there was a specialist here in town in Kansas City, and he, he said, well, you, you idiot, why don't you just put a drain top? <laughs> like, oh, gosh, that seems too easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about if I got on the other side of the wall, on the exterior wall, and I put a drain in? Would that, would that help it? Oh, that helps immensely. Yeah, at the fr- uh, like a French drain or something? Yeah, I mean, you you ov- always you want to get the water away from your foundation yeah. as best right. you can. So right. mm-hmm. you, know, you slope it away. You do whatever you got to do. A lot of these old homes had three to four feet of cement poured, like kind of like a sidewalk. Only it's right up against the foundation, and it has a, a maybe over two feet. It'll have a, a one inch slope. And and they and they get the water at least two or three feet away from the foundation, and then so these old homes were built really close together. I mean, yes, they, and 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 that was kind of an interesting thing to me. I'm like, back in the time they had all this land around. Why did they care about building the houses so there was only ten feet behind them? Well, the reason was they were riding horses, and and they were working at banks or businesses down in the center of the city. And if you spread these houses out on half an acre, then nobody could ride their horse to work. It was too mm. far every day. So they they uh, built them really close together, and everybody could walk to work or or whatever. But anyway, these these three foot cement slabs or four foot are poured with a a pretty aggressive pitch, and then there's a trench that's poured where the water goes into and it just goes straight to the street in most cases, presuming you have the slope and the grade and, and all that to mm. make work. But, um, that helps a lot. I mean, I, I'm almost not, I'd almost say try that before you put a drain tile on the outside, but, um, but the drain tile is a good idea. I, if you were building a new home and you don't put drain tile on the inside and the outside of your foundation, and I don't care almost where you live, you're probably missing the boat. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. So, Thank hey, so being a uh, TV star and all, tell me, uh, do you remember the first time you got recognized from being on the show? Yeah, I do. Yeah? Tell us yeah. about it. It's uh, funny. I was at the uh, uh, coffee shop, and I'm mm-hmm. standing in line to get my coffee, and I think I had a granddaughter with me. And... Uh, there's this couple off to the side and they're just standing there staring at me. And, you know, <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm not really up to this yet. I don't know what's going on. And, yeah. and, uh, and then all of a sudden, and, and we'd been quiet, we hadn't talked. And so then all of a sudden I, my granddaughter said something and I responded and man, right away they came over and they're like, we weren't sure it was you until we heard your voice. Then we knew it. <laughs> Love the show, you know, all that stuff. And, Nice. Right. Yeah. It's been kind of fun. Most people have been very, no, everybody. I can't think of a single situation where everybody hasn't been really respectful. And, nice. and um, kind of the most they'll say is when they walk by, they say, hey, we love your daughter. We love your show. We love, you know, everything about it. Keep it up. Right. Or something. Nice. 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 Great. That's great. Great. Like, All right. So tell us about this. Over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the new project you're working on because you don't have enough to do, obviously. So you yeah. have to start yet another project. Right. Well, it's kind of fun. Uh, the It's called Working with Ward. And mm-hmm. it started uh, because of the crew. We have a lot of young people on the on the show. Mm-hmm. And one day the producer says, we need a we need a video of you putting a door in. And mm-hmm. So, okay, there's, that's simple enough, you know. I mean, give me some shims and some screws and nails and whatever, and, and the door. Yeah. And, and I put it in, and when we're done, this lady, really nice young lady, says, "Ward, 
you ought to have a show about that. I had no idea how easy it was to put a door in. And the young man that was on there doing the filming that day, not the not the lead guy, uh, he said, oh, yeah, he says, I'd watch that every week. <laughs> and and did a couple more things kind of like that in the same kind of response. And finally, I said, well, geez, I guess maybe everybody doesn't have the, the benefit of growing up like I did on a farm. And right. if we wanted to expand the barn or the house or something, we had to do it. We didn't have any, any money to buy anybody, hire anybody else to do it. So I, my dad, my grandfather taught me how to do it. And uh, so that's how it started. And and so we've been doing everything from the simplest little things like I just did one that was how to how to do your faucet. How to you got a leaky faucet? Yeah. Why spend two hundred and fifty dollars to go buy a new one or have a plumber come in and spend four hundred dollars when for a dollar ninety nine you can go buy a washer <laughs> and, and show you how to fix it. Right, and, right. Uh, right. what else? I don't know. One time we made coasters. So just silly <laughs> little coasters. Actually, here's, here's one of them. Um, just, um, uh, my granddaughter, I, I just cut yeah, the woods, nice. polished it. My granddaughter painted them for me and, and uh, we're making coasters. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, let's, and let's get some cocktails and put it on there. Let's go. Jameson. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I had I had to change the sump pump here at my house one time, so I changed the sump pump and we videoed it. And nice. And all of those things, it's starting to catch on. I mean, it, obviously in the beginning, you know, ten people would watch it, and <laughs> right, it, sure. They're sure. on YouTube as well. If you go to my uh, Instagram account at Ward Schrader, uh, they'll be posted on there, and you can click on them, and it'll take you right to YouTube. Okay. And nice. um, I think the last one I did had. a had a couple 300 viewers and lots of positive responses. So we're just going to keep it up and nice. they're easy to do. And yeah. I got to get a little more professional at the photography. Uh, <laughs> I kind of do it myself. Uh, and okay. of times I'm just doing it with my phone and that's uh, kind of crummy, but you know, yeah. Yeah. okay, it's fun. Yeah. 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 Next, next time when we talk to you next year, you'll be like, yeah, well, I have my own network now, and uh, yeah, I've got a crew of about 4,000 people yeah. working for me now, and Tyler Perry, I uh, just had me build his new house, and Oprah Winfrey, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the list goes on. Do you think we'll have a show on his network? Uh, if he likes us, yeah. maybe. Yeah. You know, I, I have been thinking about that. And, uh -huh. and, of course you would. <laughs> why would why would I be surprised? Yeah. So what what does it take to have your own tele television channel? I don't know. I think you're going the right way. Yeah. 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 Hot right. TV show, hospital channel, everything. <laughs> have everything. You can have your own like your own channel. Yeah. <laughs> If I could right. run a hospital, I'd, uh, I'm pretty darn sure I could run a TV channel. Uh, right, yeah. There you go. I'm yep. sure you could. <laughs> I have no doubt. I'm not worried about you at all. No, no. Well, it's been a great ride. Uh, you know, it, and, and the beautiful part about it, it's not over. I'm super healthy for my age. Uh, Good. My wife is too. I'm sorry. Yeah. I said I knocked on wood just to make sure I'm a little super. Yeah. He actually so, knocked yeah. on barble. Yeah. It's not wood. He knocked on. Come on, yeah. it was a thought wood. that counts. We got right. Yeah, wood. Right there. <laughs> there you go. We're good. We got you. So life's yeah. been great. God's been good to me. Uh, good. Hopefully, I'm uh, I'm holding up my end of the deal. <laughs> and, uh, um, couldn't be happier. Life's good. Good. Right, good. You know, well, listen. That, so that's another thing I would tell a lot of young people. There's there's always a positive in everything. You mm -hmm. don't have to look at everything in a negative view. Right. So, anyway, enough of yeah, my. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad you guys let me interview you. I, I really, yeah. Well, thank you. For thanks. That. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to expose my soft white underbelly. Yeah. Please, please call us again when you you know <laughs> want to bring us back on your show. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. I I like it. I always kind of wanted to be Johnny Carson or something like that. So that tells you me how yep. I am. Well, we've got uh, Caleb here in the studio that you don't see, but he's kind of like our Ed McMahon. So yeah, he yeah. is. He sits so, there on the computer and just waits for his yes, something, sir. and we'll, he'll just spin <laughs> around with something, you know, if, if we need it. So yeah. he's doing an internship. He's a uh, yeah. he's in Quinnipiac College right now. Well, where's and, the starlets? Uh, I don't see any starlets back there behind you. Oh, they're outside. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah. 
I mean, we get this nothing big done. picture window in the front of the studio here, and it's just yeah. it's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, so we're, talking yeah. You, yeah, yeah, we're talking about you. Yeah, we're talking about you. Yeah, you know, Caleb gets us to our car we're, safely, yeah, you know, yeah. so we can get out of here. Yeah. So yeah, in, 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 you're on Times Square, and they're all standing at the window. Oh, it's pretty ridiculous. much exactly like I'm that. Yeah, you got it. You got it. How many followers do you have on your podcast? Um, so the last time we found out the numbers, it was like 25,000. I think we were up to. We're, we're past that now. Yeah. So we're that was, that was like a couple of months ago. So oh, well, congratulations. So you guys yeah, are thank you. considered influencers. We're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're getting there. So, you know, we've got national companies that are looking to, to sponsor shows and stuff, which has been kind of nice. And yeah. people like yourself, you know, wanted to be on the show and you know, it's, it's been great. I mean, you know, we were, we were told on our first year anniversary, uh, we interviewed a gentleman called the rogue engineer. I don't know if you know who he is, but he does a lot of YouTube videos and stuff and tons and tons of followers. But he told us, you know, you gotta, you gotta do three years. He's like, there's just no way around it. You have to do a full three years and then you will see, you know, what you've been looking for. And he's right. I mean, we're in two and a half, I think right now. And just, you know, where we started from, like you said, you know, when you're with a YouTube video, there's one, one view, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, you know, you couldn't even get our family to listen to our podcast. Yeah, right. Great like, job. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Like, hun, the hun, yeah. Hun, yeah. What did you think of the show? Huh? <laughs> when when did you do that? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so you know it's kind of it's kind of really cool you know to see how it kind of changes over the course of time so yeah we're, we're we're having a blast so well remember me remember us little people when you become big <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely well, it's important to laugh every day whether it's at yes. someone or yourself mostly at myself yeah. you know <laughs> people laugh at me whatever but uh, to be, to make people smile and just to just to give them that moment of like you know everything is cool everything's okay and you are doing a great job you know, and that's that's what keeps me going. Yeah. Um, this show has been a great outlet. Mm -hmm. You know, I get to hang out with him and um, we feel like we're doing something right. You know, we're doing something good um, mm -hmm. and everyone gets to escape for a little bit, you know, including us. And then we get to meet people like you. Yeah. To keep well, us, it's, you know, it's a wonderful thing to have a good friend like you guys are. That's yes. Uh, yeah. I, I think in my life I've I've got a maybe a handful that i would consider really good friends mm -hmm. that's what my dad said you can yep. count them on one hand yep yeah yeah but uh -huh. lucky man to have that many that's true that's true <clears throat> but in the, in the meantime too it's great to be surrounded by friends who love you and support you mm -hmm. you know because you've created that you know you've created that whole circle when you when you're in a room and you're with people that are laughing and having a good time and conversing i'm like wow this is something that I did. I did this. Well, Good I don't. You, I got to correct you there. I don't let my whole family in one room at one time with me. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about Smart. family. Smart. I said friends. I said friends. I didn't say okay. family. Yeah. <laughs> That's said friends. But you, you let. So we got when you get son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, nine grandchildren, a couple of cousins are thrown in there. You get over twenty people in a house. Mm. It's pretty hard hard to keep everybody happy. So I've kind of yeah. I've kind of made a rule that we don't do that around here. <laughs> That's why they have Jameson. Yep. <laughs> do it in shifts. That's do it in it. shifts. <laughs> do it in shifts. That's exactly. I don't know why it's people so are complaining about Thanksgiving right now, man. You uh, know, it's COVID. Is just like you know, no, don't have Thanksgiving, and I'm like, that's okay. It's, there's going to be no stress over the turkey, over the this and that. And then they're coming, they're coming late. And then all of a sudden politics gets involved or religion. <laughs> and there we go. There we go. They're back to the Jameson again. So are you guys suffering with the, uh, with COVID? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, so. Having to shut down or anything. Yeah. So they did shut down here in the state. Uh, we're in Connecticut. So um, they did shut down in the beginning you know, we were very fortunate. We were considered essential business, um, mm -hmm. doing remodeling type work, which is great. We were very, very fortunate to be able to work during that time period where a lot of people weren't able to do that. Um, but you know, Connecticut did very, very well for a long time. And, um, now the, you know, the dreaded second or third wave, whatever they keep saying, you know, is, is definitely affecting us as well. So, so. we've moved up from 3% to like 6%. I don't know what it is <clears throat> now, but they're cutting back now and things are going on and just, you know, you hear the chatter all around us. Uh, Massachusetts bad mm -hmm. now spiked. New Hampshire spiked. So we're in that. We're right around that. And, um, you know, there's travel restrictions yeah. or 
stuff that we got to do now. So we're really being vigilant. Like the Skype thing is really working. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm wearing masks all the time. I know where he's been. He pretty much knows where I've been. (laughs) So, you know, so that's where we are. That's what we're doing. So we just got to get through this, man. We just got to get through this and stay positive and just see it on the other side. You know, keep moving. I have the uh, farm slash ranch that I grew up on. My father passed that on to me. And um, there's a homestead there. About three years ago, I completely remodeled it. Uh, either had to burn it down or or do something else with it. So I gutted it and started over. And, and uh, it's really nice. So when the first COVID came last spring, what, February or March? And everything. Yeah, March, yeah. <clears throat> my wife and I went out there and we spent two months at the ranch. Uh, wow. It's living in the middle of nowhere. It's 20 some miles from any town. And wow. And um, it, we saw two people in two months. Wow. It was, it was really pretty awesome. Now, I don't, <laughs> know, I don't yeah. really know if I'm going to feel that way if it shuts down again. But, yeah. you know, we had the greatest time. We, had, we spent time together. Uh, we had to rely. We were, it was just us. So yeah. we had to rely upon each other for everything. And yeah. It really, uh, we've been married 48 years. Uh, and God bless you, man. Congrats. Thank you. And it it kind of reinvigorated, I guess. I mean, not that we needed it, but mm-hmm. it, it kind of opened up avenues or doors or whatever you want to describe it as and really made for one of the most pleasant times we've had in years. Nice. Nice. And, and uh, I... So I, I hope, I think we're going to do it every spring as long as I'm not filming or got something else that's stopping mm-hmm. me. I've I got great internet out there. I can connect most of my business in the mornings from yeah. my house. And, and, um, but it was fun. But I, I feel so sorry for all those small businesses out there. Oh, oh, terrible. Oh. Make, uh, little restaurants, the little mm-hmm. shop where I bought my guitars, they had to close. They, yeah. they didn't get any PPP money because everybody was commissioned. And so they didn't get any of that. And mm. um, the, there was still one exclusively men's clothing store. And now they're closing here in, here in kind of the neighborhood and mm-hmm. uh, one after the other. And, you know, I just hope when it opens back up that, there are jobs for all those people that are sitting out there accepting the government money. I worry about it. Right. Yeah. yeah no, we I, all I, do. Yeah. I hope everybody gets gainfully employed again. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. all right. Well, Hey, listen, Ward, it was really nice to meet this you. This is the longest show we've ever had. Yeah, actually it is. We actually it was like two shows in one. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't shut up. Is that the point? <laughs> <laughs> I would. No, shut. I thought it was, I thought it was a good show. I hope everybody else agreed with yeah, us. Yeah, I thought it was um, a great show. Yeah. I'd love to hear from everybody on it. Um, but please, if you haven't checked it out yet, if you're one of those few that is not watching the show, it's bargain mansions on HGTV. They're in season three B three B. So, and wow. continued success for you, sir. Thank you. Could I make a, a, one last plug for my daughter? Absolutely. I, I've given it. Oh, please. Yeah. Schrader, at Ward Schrader for my Instagram account. And my daughter's is at Tamara Day. So pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, thank you for having me. Been great. Absolutely. I enjoyed Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, you, you have very interesting lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it, but thank you. <laughs> well, you do. And, and uh, interesting to talk to. I always enjoy that. Well, thank you very oh, much. You, uh, and the feeling is mutual for sure. Yes, very much so. Yes. Well, what a pleasure. What an honor yes. to have you on the show. And we do want to thank uh, our sponsor for today's show, Rings End Lumber. Thank yep. you very much for uh, for being part of the show. You have all your goods and needs, all everything you need right there at Rings End Lumber. Absolutely. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye, Jim. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>